Welcome to Lesson 2 of this Extra Class course. Tonight we'll be talking about operating principles. On this chart, in the, which is in the study guide, you'll notice that the Extra Class licensed operators have operating privileges that a general does not. In particular, the area is marked as a green E. With an extra class license, there are no changes above 28 megahertz or in the WART bands, 12 and 17 meters, or in the 160 meter band. The changes are in the 80, 40, 20, and 15 meter bands. On 80 meters, you gain quite a bit of additional frequency allocation, in particular the red portions. On 80 meters, you also gain quite a bit of more privileges. On 20 meters, you also gain additional frequencies. On 15 meters, you also gain additional privileges. The extra class license also improves your ability to do DXing because you can talk to people on parts of the bands that you could not legally access before. And in fact, many DX stations hang out on the low ends of the bands where you gain additional privileges with the extra. DX windows are narrow parts of several bands where a lot of DXing occurs. These areas are shared with other classes of license on a gentleman's agreement. The gentleman's agreement is to avoid operating there to give priority to the DX stations. So a watering hole is a specific frequency that works well for making DX contacts. Here is a listing of DX windows and favorite watering holes. Notice that most of these are near the bottom of a band, which of course requires an extra license. When working DX, exchanges are usually very short, exchanging call signs, signal reports, perhaps a serial number, and usually little else. It is important to understand how to work split. Split is where the DX station is transmitting on one frequency and listening on another frequency. You need to do a lot of listening to understand how the DX station is operating if you want to log them. Propagation is a big deal when working DX. The two websites listed are useful for estimating the best time of day and frequency for working that certain DX station. There is a very long list of contests. The ARRL Contest Corral is a good source of listing upcoming contests, including the required exchange. To operate in a contest effectively, you need to know the information listed here, such as the exchange, the suggested frequencies and dates, and times of operation before getting on the air. Contests are not conducted on the 12 and 17 meter bands. You need to avoid operating on a DX national calling frequency or on a DX watering hole. Be sure to remember that a DX station may be calling using a frequency or mode that is not available here in the United States. After the contest is over, you can submit your log manually or electronically. The preferred electronic format is the Cabrillo file, the format of which you see here. DX spotting websites use hams worldwide to log the stations that they are hearing. Here is an example of a listing on the DX Watch website. Digital modes such as radio teletype, PSK31, computer-based CW, and many other modes require an interface box between your computer and your transceiver.
Another popular digital mode in DX is DX via the Internet, known as Echolink. The Internet is used to link together repeaters around the world. You select which repeater you want to be hooked up to worldwide, and from there you can have a QSO with someone you can access who can access the Internet. Before there were cell phones, hams could send in and receive email messages to one another using packet radio. Packet radio AX.25 is a variation of the communication method used between computers to let them talk to one another, known as X.25. Hams have been very successful designing and building PACSATs. These are flying mailboxes which store and forward capability which uses packet radio. APRS stands for Automatic Position Reporting System. It uses a GPS receiver and a 2 meter transceiver to broadcast your position every few minutes. This system is tied into the internet so that you can see the location of APRS-enabled vehicles or people. For fun, try typing APRS into your computer to do a search and you'll see a display of the APS, APRS map and ham locations. Here is an example of an APRS display on the internet. It shows the route that an APRS-equipped vehicle is taking and their present position. Here is an example of another APRS display. If you use your mouse to click on an APRS node, it brings up information about the capability of that node, such as operating frequency. Let's talk about amateur satellites. Satellites obey Kepler's three laws, which are number one, all satellite orbits are elliptical. Number two, satellites move faster when they are closer to the Earth. And number three, the farther the satellite is from the Earth, the slower the orbit. A satellite flies an egg-shaped elliptical orbit. The orbit of a satellite has an inclination angle compared to the equator. Here are examples of various orbital inclination angles that the satellite may be on. For this satellite, note the apogee and the perigee. The apogee is the furthest point from the Earth and the perigee is the closest point to the Earth. AOS is the time when acquisition of signal is expected to occur, and LOS is the expected time of loss of signal. Here are a couple of weird characteristics of satellite signals. The signal may exhibit Faraday rotation, where the polarization shifts as the signal passes through the ionosphere. Also, the signal may flutter due to spin modulation. Satellite FM repeaters operate cross-band, use the FM mode, are very simple to use, and can accommodate only one QSO at a time, usually in rapid succession. Satellite transponders or translators can support multiple QSOs simultaneously and generally provide a more relaxed operating environment. Here is an example of a satellite with multiple 1.269 GHz uplinks and multiple 2.401 GHz downlinks. Here is the secret code for what frequency bands the satellite operates on as a function of the letter designation. Notice that mode UV means that the satellite receives in the UHF band and transmits in the VHF band. 